everyone buzzing after uh, the West London derby victory last week? I suppose that's, uh, that helps everyone bounce, doesn't it? Yeah, of course, uh, it was a big win for us. You know, last time we played them away, I lost the drug, we lost. So, you know, it was good to, you know, get revenge on them and, and get a clean sheet. So, mm. everyone was buzzing. Yeah, as a defensive unit, do you take a, a personal lot of pride out of... I know that they didn't really get many shots on target. Dan had to make one save, I think. But, obviously, the boys in front did their job. Do you, do you take a little bit of pride out of that, as much as goal scorers take pride out of scoring their goals? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think, as a defender, you always want to keep a clean sheet. And you know, when you achieve that, it's always a good feeling. So you know, for us to keep a clean sheet against QPR, it was good. Mm. Um, people started looking at the table again, actually, after that result. Um, has the squad been looking at the at the table? You said suddenly the gap has come down a little bit again to that top six. Is that has that been in your consciousness? Yeah, to be fair, I think the lads, you know, before before QPR, we didn't really look at the table, but then. You know, after the game, we saw the table. I think it's only like eight points now between the playoffs. So, I think as long as we, as we keep believing and keep doing what we're doing right now, I think we'll have a good a good chance of getting in there. Mm. Is that actually useful as a target to go into? I know players, coaches will say, "Well, it's one game at a time," but if that target is there, it's something to aim for. It's not as if the season's petering out. Actually, there is there is a, there is a wider target. Does that help with motivation? Uh, I, I I personally think that you know. As you said, I think we should be taking it game by game. I think you know if we if we keep thinking about the pairs and you know we might put us off our game. So I think for now we just need to concentrate on on doing it game by game. Mm. Now the next two games are against teams who are in those sort of positions. They're above you in the table. It's away from home though. Um, what's what are you going to do about this away form? Just one win. It's almost the, the contrast to the home form is it's almost unfathomable. Yeah, I know. Um, I think away from home. I think we've we've played really well. We've dominated games away from home. I just think you know it's it's difficult for us, you know, going away from home. But um, I think if we if we change our mindset when we go away from home, I, th I think we can get good results, especially at Middlesbrough and Sheffield United. So I think if we if we go into games knowing that you know we can beat these lot and you know we stay solid defensively, I think we've got a good chance in, in, in all of those games. You mentioned defensively, so you're now part of a back three. Um, earlier in the season it was more of a, a four at the back and, and you and Chris Mepp in particular partnering each other. Um, do, you, do you prefer either system? Do you have a preference or do you like the challenges? How, do, how does this formation challenge you more as a defender? Um, I've, played, I've played a three at the back at Charlton before so you know it's nothing new to me. You know, I don't really have a preference, you know, four at the back, three at the back. You know, I like them both, so for me, whatever the manager chooses, you know, I'm happy with both of them. Mm. What's, what's the slight difference that, to your game that you have to apply when you're playing with a three at the back? I think, you know, I've got to basically play as a right back sometimes, so, you know, when Henrik or whoever's playing down, down our side, you know, if they push up, I've got to get across and cover, so for me, it's just, you know, basically playing right back. But um, I've done that before, so and again, it's nothing new. Yeah, talking about your your previous experience, obviously you have played up at Bramwell Lane, for example, um, uh, at Sheffield United. You know, going to grounds like this, part of the reason, though, I suppose, of of wanting to be in the Championship, stepping up. You know, all your experience at Charlton, but now stepping into the the Championship. I suppose it's all part of that ambition of being a player, trying to progress, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, going to places like Middlesbrough, who are, who are a big club. You know, I've been in the Premier League, so I think for me, going in there. You know, to 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 the stadium, it's going to be a great experience for me. You know, with a big crowd there as well, so I've just got to embrace it and enjoy it. Mm. Um, obviously, it's been a step up as far as divisions are concerned for you this year. What, what, has there been any difference? Is there any difference in the championship to to League One? What what have you noticed? Yeah, th there is a difference. You know, you can tell by the quality. League One, you know, the quality. I'd say it's not it's not really the same as Championship. You can tell there's a big difference in quality, and I think. Um, you know, in, in championship you get punished a lot. So, you know, I think there's a there's a there's kind of a big difference from League One to Championship. Strikers are sharper. You can't you can't give them as many chances, maybe. Yeah, yeah. As I said, you know, you get punished. So, you know, in League One you could you could possibly get away with it, but in Championship you can't do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has it been a big learning curve for you? Do you feel that <coughs> you know on your footballing journey that that you've actually developed quite a bit this year? Yeah, yeah. I say I, I think I've developed. You know, under Thomas and Dean. 
you know, I think I'm, I'm learning every day as I, uh, when I come into training. So I think for me, it's just just to keep listening and learning from the coaches. Mm. And early in the season, we mentioned it was you know yourself and Chris were the back two, and, and two relatively you don't mind me saying younger young yeah. players. You've now got a slightly different partnership at, at the back. What was that though? Was that you know quite a you were both on a steep learning curve at that point, and you've seen Chris go on and, and obviously join Bournemouth. Yeah, I think for me and Chris, you know, we started off very well. You know, then I think we uh, we hit a bit of a uh, you know brick wall but you know I think for me and Chris as we're both young you know it's a learning curve for both of us and obviously Chris has now moved on to the Premier League so you know all the best to him in his future so you know now I'm playing with Julian and, and Johan who are more experienced you know it, you, you can tell the difference when you play with an experienced uh, defender so for me it's, it's all about learning really every game so you know take it game by game and I understand obviously I mean the, the other two you know are French, but you speak French. You've got you've got French as a language. So therefore, there was a little bit of um, Francais taking yeah. part in the back line to confuse strikers. Is yeah, that correct? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we do it every game. We speak French, especially in corners, so that uh, you know the defenders can't understand us. So I think for for us, it's a it's a great um great thing to have. Yeah, I mean, does uh, has it actually helped? Has it become that sort of yeah, French no, French it, back line? Do you think? It, it, no, it does really help. You know, uh, in corners, you can tell that the defenders are very confused. You know, they don't know what we're saying, so for us it's it's very helpful. So I think if we keep doing that and then you know confusing defenders, it will only help us. Have you noticed that that, that sort of attackers are suddenly doing a double take? Yeah. Thinking, Actually, what's going on here? We've yeah, started playing international football all the time. I think since we've been playing the free the back with Julian and Johan, you can tell that defenders are very confused when we got for for corners. So. I think um, we just need to keep doing it and, you know, confusing defenders. Have you been teaching Dan Bentley any French? Does he need to know any? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> we'll be teaching Dan Bentley any French anytime soon, so <laughs> I'm good. Uh, and just in regards to, to Middlesbrough, obviously it's a tough challenge. I mean, uh, but I'm not quite sure where the pressure is. You say that obviously that you know, the gap has come down to top six, but you're still just trying to plug away. Maybe the expectation for Middlesbrough was that they were going to be challenging. They're, they're under a bit of bit of pressure yeah. going into these games now. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, Middlesbrough, they need to win on Saturday. And for us, whereas, you know, we want to win, you know. So for us, we're going into the game, you know, you know, um, going into the game freely. So I think for us, we just need to, you know, at least put a, put a bit of pressure on Middlesbrough, you know, and get into their faces.